हेलो एंड वेलकम बैक टू दिस चैनल डियर स्टूडेंट्स टूडे टॉपिक इज ट्रांसमिशन लाइन पैरामीटर्स इट इज द टॉपिक फ्रॉम सब्जेक्ट इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक फील्ड थेरी फॉर टी एंड टी स्टूडेंट्स वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न इन दिस सेशन वील डिस्कस द पैरामीटर्स ऑफ ट्रांसमिशन लाइन देर आर टू मेन पैरामीटर्स वन इज प्राइमरी कॉन्स्टेंट्स एंड अदर इज सेकेंडरी कॉन्स्टेंट्स वील डिस्कस बोथ दिज कॉन्स्टेंट्स and we will derive some important relationship between primary constants and secondary constant first part what is the definition of transmission line it is a device which guides energy from one point to another is known as a transmission line one uh, common example of a transmission line is uh, everyone is aware it is a telephone line then mscb lines electricity lines these are some common examples of the transmission line now in case of transmission line we will consider four primary terms that is r l c g resistor inductor capacitor and conductance in other circuits we can well separate out these components physically so in such circuits these parameters are known as lumped parameters whereas in case of transmission line there is no physical presence of such parameters but effect of such parameters exists so these parameters are distributed across the transmission line so these parameters in case of transmission line are known as distributed parameters this is equivalent circuit of a transmission line now as i mentioned L is inductor, R is resistance, C is capacitance, G is conductance. These things, these uh, constants or these parameters are not physically existing, but effect of these parameters is present right from input to the output side. So these parameters are distributed parameters. Now how the effect is present? In case of transmission line, the length is in terms of kilometers. So for the flow of signal the transmission line provides certain opposition so effect of resistance is there similarly the current passes through the transmission line so due to flow of current some magnetic flux is created that gives effect of inductance keep in mind r and l resistor and inductor are in series are in horizontal line now whenever there are two plates and in between two plates certain dielectric or insulator is present it is known as the capacitance in case of transmission line usually there are two wires in between the two wires even air medium acts as a dielectric so this produces effect of capacitance throughout the transmission line which is denoted by c now practically insulator is not a perfect medium some leakage current always flow through this so certain leakage current flows from one transmission line one wire to the another wire of transmission line this gives effect of conductance so l r c g are known as primary constants of transmission line these are primary constants which are not physically present but effect of such constants are existing from input to the output of transmission line now as i mentioned the length of transmission line is l which is in terms of kilometers so while doing the calculations we will be considering one section of transmission line in simplified language we can say if length is 100 kilometers we will consider a length of 1 kilometer and we will do the calculation for 1 kilometer multiply it with the total length of transmission line to get the final answers now these are the primary constants r l c g there is one more term which is known as a secondary constants so there are two important uh, secondary constants in case of transmission line one secondary constant is z0 which is known as characteristic impedance you don't have to mug up this definition it's very simple impedance is similar to the resistance and basic formula of resistance is voltage upon current so same way characteristic impedance is ratio of voltage upon current we'll discuss this thing in detail later now second another a secondary constant is denoted by gamma which is known as propagation constant so gamma is propagation constant and relation of gamma is e raised to gamma is is upon 
आई आर आई स्टैंड फॉर करंट एस इज सेंडिंग एंड सो आई एस इज सेंडिंग एंड दैट इज ट्रांसमिटिंग एंड करंट आई आर इज रिसीविंग एंड करंट फ्रॉम दिस इफ आई वॉन्ट टू सिंप्लीफाई दिस इक्वेशन आई कैन राइट ग्यामा इज इक्वल टू एल एन सी I want to vanish out the effect of E, so I will take natural log. Since E is there, we know that log to the base E is the symbol which indicates it is related to the natural log. It is also denoted by L n. So, if you want to vanish out effect of E, I will take natural log on both sides. So, at the LHS, I will be getting gamma into E equals to natural log of I s upon I r. this notation gamma represents the propagation constant which gives an idea about the variation of current and voltage throughout the transmission line this i have written in terms of current same formula i can write in terms of voltage as vs upon vr simple logic vs is sending end voltage vr is receiving end voltage so this is the notation of gamma so to uh, Uh, important secondary constants are characteristic impedance z0 and propagation constant gamma now this propagation constant gamma is also expressed as alpha plus j beta the term alpha is known as attenuation constant attenuation is basically how much amount of attenuation is taking place reduction in the signal is taking place when the signals are transmitting through the transmission line that is denoted by notation alpha which is known as attenuation constant it is also defined as it is the real part of propagation constant the another parameter is beta which is known as phase shift it indicates whether there is any phase shift in the signal which is passing through the transmission line it is also defined as the imaginary part of propagation constants so these are the definitions of primary and secondary constants in case of a transmission line now we will derive two important derivations that is derivation of z0 in terms of primary constant and derivation of gamma propagation constant in terms of primary constant the first important derivation is derivation of z0 that is characteristic impedance in terms of primary constants primary constants means r l c g z0 is the characteristic impedance now this network this circuit is known as a t network because its shape is like a english letter t so it is known as the t network it is very simple network from electrical networks these values in the horizontal line whatever we are writing this is z1 by 2 z1 by 2 vertical impedance z is impedance vertical impedance is z2 using same analogy we have learned the equivalent circuit of transmission line how to memorize the things in case of equivalent circuit what we learned we had resistor and inductor in series like this and capacitor and conductance g in parallel like this this was the equivalent diagram of transmission line for one unit length now z1 means series arm impedance in series i have r and l resistor and inductor so r remains as it is impedance of inductance is j omega l this is z1 by 2 so i will write it like this z1 is equals to r plus j omega l very simple z1 is the impedance of horizontal line in horizontal line i have r and l impedance of l is j omega l so total impedance becomes r plus j omega l so z1 by 2 is there in the equivalent diagram so for transmission line i have written r plus j omega l using this notation since it is z1 by 2 divided by 2 into l what is what this small l indicates small l indicates length of transmission line whereas capital l indicates the inductance now c and g are connected in vertical line or they are in parallel these are also known as shunt elements so its value is this conductance remains as it is for capacitance it is j omega c so i will write it like this one upon since it is a parallel uh, i i will write it like this one upon g plus j omega c into l so it is g 
plus j omega c omega c j omega c is the reactance of capacitance rather it is 1 by j omega c so it is 1 by g plus j omega c into l l is the length of transmission line this is the way how you can remember uh, this uh, notations as far as equivalent uh, t network of transmission line is concerned now first we will derive the expression for z0 in case of simple t network and we will apply same technology for the transmission line now in case of this network values are very simple z1 by 2 z1 by 2 they are in horizontal line z2 is in vertical line at the output we are supposed to connect some impedance known as z0 if you measure the imp impedance from the input side that is denoted by z in now one important property of z0 that is characteristic impedance is that whatever you are connecting at the output suppose you are connecting 100 ohm at the output if you measure impedance or resistance from the input side if you are getting same value that is 100 ohm this is known as characteristic impedance to make the thing simple if you are connecting z0 out at the output in case of transmission line or in case of ideal t network then if you measure the impedance from input side you should get same answer that is z in must be same as z0 now if i want to do the calculation suppose i want to measure what is the value of z in that is equals to z0 if i am measuring from input side then simple logic as we apply for any electrical circuit if for looking from this end towards the network start doing calculations from the remaining end means if you are measuring from this end i will be doing calculation from this end so these two are in same wire this is same wire so they are in series if first thing first combination is in series next will be in parallel next will be in series and so on so i will write it like this since as i said these two i need to consider first this is in series so it becomes z1 by 2 plus z0 this gives me series combination of these two then it is in parallel with z2 i will write the symbol of parallel like this into z2 and this combination is again in series with z1 by 2 this is the equation with which i have written for input impedance very simple these two in series then if first combination in series next is in parallel third is in series and so on now let us simplify this equation now onwards, instead of considering one extra notation z in, I will consider only z0. So, this equation can be written as z0 is equals to, first I will simplify the square bracket term. So, we know that if these two things are in parallel in the num numerator, take multiplication of terms like this into z2. Take multiplication of these two. In the denominator, take addition of same things. This is z1 by 2 plus z0 plus z2 plus this last term I am keeping it as it is. Let us simplify the things further. I will take LCM over here. So it becomes z1 plus 2z0 upon 2 into z2 divided by z1 plus 2z0 upon 2 plus z2 plus z1 by 2. Let us simplify it further. I will multiply uh, this bracket term by z2 in the numerator. So it becomes z1 into z2. First term is getting multiplied with z2 plus 2z0 into z2. Second term is also getting multiplied and divided by 2 remains as it is. This is the numerator term. In case of denominator, I will take this 2 as a LCM. So, this becomes Z1 plus 2Z0 plus 2Z2. This 2 is getting multiplied with Z2 divided by 2 plus last term Z1 by 2. This term, I have kept it as it is. Now, in this case, this 2 and 2 gets cancelled. So, resultant equation can be written as z0 is equals to z1 z2 plus 2 z0 z2 upon this 2 and 2 gets cancelled upon z1 plus 2 z0 plus 2 z2 plus z1 by 2 again simplify it so 
I, I have to take uh, LCM, so LCM will be 2 times this value. So this term will get multiplied with 2, Z1 will get multiplied with this term. So it can be written as 2 Z1 Z2, I am multiplying this entire term with 2 plus 4 Z0 Z2 plus now multiply this term each of the denominator term by Z1, so it becomes Z1 square plus 2 Z0 Z1 plus 2 Z1 into Z2. This entire term of denominator is getting multiplied with Z1 divided by 2 into this term will be the LCM. So it is 2 Z1 plus 4 Z0 plus 4 Z2. And the LHS I have Z0. Now transfer this term at the LHS. So Z0 will be getting multiplied with each term. So it becomes 2 Z1 Z0 plus 4 Z0 square plus 4 Z0 Z2 is equals to 2 Z1 Z2 plus 4 Z0 Z2. I am keeping this numerator term as it is plus Z1 square now you can well make one more simplification this 2 Z1 into Z2 and this 2 into Z1 into Z2 can be written as 4 Z1 into Z2 plus 4 Z0 Z2 as it is plus Z1 square as it is plus this remaining term 2 Z0 Z1 so I have just clubbed up these things and what we are expected to do, I, I have multiplied this entire term with this and I have simplified this uh, numerator term which I have written it at the RHS. Now this term 2Z1Z0 and this term 2Z0Z1 gets cancelled because this term is at both sides. Then another term 4z0z1 this term and this term again gets cancelled so remaining terms i will write it like this 4z0 square is equals to z1 square this thing i am writing first plus 4z1 z2 therefore i can write z0 square is equals to this 4 i will transfer it at the rhs so it becomes Z1 square by 4 plus Z1 into Z2. This 4 will get divided with each term. So it becomes Z1 square by 4. And this 4 and 4 gets cancelled. So this is the equation of Z0. Z0 square. If I want to obtain equation of Z0, it is simply under root of uh, Z1 square by 4 plus Z1 into Z2. This is the equation of Z0 in terms of uh, Z1 and Z2. Observe this equation. This equation is not for the transmission line. This we have derived it for the T network. I have to modify this equation for the transmission line. We have already discussed this value. What we have discussed earlier, from these two diagrams, we know that Z1 is equals to, compare these terms. So Z1 by 2 is this value that means Z1 is equals to R plus J omega L into small l. Small l is the length of transmission line whereas Z2 if you compare these two things Z2 will be equals to 1 by G plus J omega C into L. Simply put these values in the equation of Z0, so it becomes Z0 is equals to under root of Z1 square. So square of this term becomes R plus J omega L bracket square into L square. I am taking square of this term divided by 4. It is Z1 square by 4 plus Z1 that is R plus J omega L into small l into Z2. Z2 is 1 upon G plus J omega C into small l. Now, this L and L, this L and L gets cancelled. 
L small l represents length of transmission line. So if length of transmission line is very small, that means if L tends to infinity, then this L, this is just an assumption. For a small length of transmission line, L tends to zero, so L square becomes zero. So this term get vanished. So final expression of Z0 can be written as under root of R plus J omega L upon G plus J omega C. This is an important derivation of characteristic impedance Z0 in terms of primary constants. Now there is one more derivation that is derivation of gamma propagation uh, constant in terms of primary constant. Next is we have to obtain express gamma that is propagation constants in terms of primary constants. This is comparatively simple derivation compared to the earlier derivation. We already discussed values of Z1 and Z2. We need one formula that is exponential series expansion. It is e raised to gamma L is 1 plus gamma L plus gamma square L square by 2 and so on. We will be making use of this formula. Now, I have considered the same T network Z1 by 2, Z1 by 2, this value is Z2. At the output, I have connected characteristic impedance Z0. At the input side, some voltage source is connected that is denoted by V. The current which is supplied by the voltage source is known as sending end currents that is IS. It is sending end current. The current passing through the load is IR which is receiving end current. Now, up to this point, the current is IS. After this, some current passes through Z2. Remaining current is passing through this branch, which is denoted by IR. We are interested in calculating value of IR. This is the basic current or main current. After this point, current gets divided into these two parts. So, we need to use current division formula. What is that formula? In terms of current division formula, if I want IR, formula is whatever current you want to calculate that current is equals to in this case IR is equals to supply current supply current is IS into opposite resistance see IR is current passing through this resistance except this resistance this is known as current division point after this current gets divided I am interested in calculating IR formula is IS supply current this current into remaining resistance except IR, what is remaining resistance? Z2 divided by addition of all after current division point, after this point. So this will not be considered in the formula. Addition of all impedances. So it becomes Z2 plus Z1 by 2 plus Z0. Now, from this, what I want to do, I want to obtain the equation for IS upon IR because we have discussed the formula E raised to gamma is expressed as IS upon IR. So from this basic equation, let us obtain this equation. I will write it from this IS upon IR. I will keep IS as it is. I will transfer IR at the RHS and this entire thing will be transferred at the LHS. So it becomes Z2 plus Z1 by 2 plus Z0 upon Z2. What I did, I have transferred this term at the LHS. So it becomes a reciprocal of this. So I have written it as it is. And this term is transferred at the RHS. So it becomes IS upon IR. But IS upon IR is known as E raised to gamma. It is denoted by E raised to gamma, where gamma is the propagation constant. If we want to consider length L of a transmission line, then simplest technique is this gamma is to be multiplied by length L because whatever formula we have obtained up to this step, that is for unit length in a simplified language for one kilometer. If length is 100 kilometers, this gamma must be multiplied with 100. So I have written E raised to gamma L, which is equals to same equation. Now let us further simplify this equation. So I can write it like this. E raised to gamma L is equals to, I will divide entire term by Z2, so it becomes 1 plus Z1 upon 2 Z2, then Z2 upon Z2 becomes 1, Z1 by 2 upon Z2 becomes Z1 by 2 Z2 plus Z0 upon Z2. 
I have written the values of Z1 and Z2. Similarly, in the earlier derivation, we have obtained the formula of Z0, which is under root of R plus J omega L upon G plus J omega C. So put the values of Z1, Z2 and Z0 in this equation. So we will get it like this. E raised to gamma L is equals to 1 plus. Value of Z1 is this. R plus J omega L into small l divided by 2 into Z2. Value of Z2 is 1 upon G plus J omega C into L. This is the value of Z2 plus Z0. I have to put this value of Z0 as it is. It is under root of R plus J omega L upon G plus J omega C. That is value of Z0 divided by Z2. That is 1 upon G plus J omega C into L. So, this thing can be written as this one remains as it is. This term, I will simplify it like this. R plus J omega L into G plus J omega C divided by 2. This L will come upward, so it becomes L square plus simplify this thing further. So it is under root of R plus J omega L upon G plus J omega C into G plus J omega C into L. So this I got after simplification. Now you don't have to further simplify. I will tell you a simple trick. I have to make use of this formula to solve this equation. How to make use of this formula? Consider this term only related to L square. Related to L square, I have this term. I mean, this term is getting multiplied with L square in the formula. With respect to L square, we have this term gamma square by 2. So, if you compare the corresponding terms, I can simply write it as gamma square by 2 is equals to R plus J omega L into G plus J omega C divided by 2. So remaining part is pretty simple. This 2, 2 gets cancelled. So gamma square is equal to this term. That means gamma is equal to under root of R plus J omega L into G plus J omega C. This is the final equation of propagation constant gamma and as I said earlier this gamma can be expressed as alpha plus j beta. So this is the end of derivation for propagation constant. That's it for today's session. Thanks for attending this session. Thank you very much.